Hello. Welcome to our uh, sessions on uh, transmission and distribution under the e Sikshana program of VTU. So this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of uh, Engineering bringing you the sessions. So in my last uh, session, I had discussed about different line models and uh, we also saw a number of problems in the seventh lecture. And this is the last lecture for this module. And uh, the learning objective of this session is to find out the parameters of equivalent pi and t models for long lines. And also we will look at some quiz questions. Here. Now, we have seen the, actually we didn't develop a model for the long line. We got the ABCD parameters for the model, uh, for the long line. But then if you look at the circuit, if you recollect the circuit uh, equivalent, it was distributed, right? So at every one kilometer, we had a R and an X and a Y and so on. There were a number of lumped parameters. So here the issue is whether what we are going to see is uh, whether I can represent it by a nominal T and pi model, like I did the medium line. That's the question. And if you recollect the derivation of the rigorous method, what we did, so we considered a small portion of the line and then we saw how the voltage before and after the section, how it is compromised, how it is, uh, you know, how it changes and so on and so forth. And we derived the wave equation for the voltage and for the current. Clear? Okay. So first we will take up the equivalent pi model. So this is what the equivalent pi model looks like. Does it look familiar? Exactly like how we did for the medium line. Only thing is in the medium line, this was y by two. This was also y by two and this was z. But then I can't put y by two here because here in the long line, I am considering the distributed nature of the parameters here. So what I want to, and with that distributed nature accounted, I have derived the ABCD constants. With the distributed nature account, accounted, I have derived the ABCD constant, which are correct. I have what I call as the rigorous method. So now what I will do is, I will find the parameters here, what I have marked Y dash, Z dash, such that the ABCD parameters of this equivalent network is same as what I derived for the long line. Clear? Then I can say that this circuit is the equivalent of the long line. It's the equivalent circuit model. So that's the idea here. Got it? Yes, what we want to do. So this equations, let me write here. What, are, what is this VS? So Vs, this is Vr. So Vs will be, we have already written equations of this for the medium line. So Vs is one plus, just remember, you just think this is simply a pi network, right? What we derived for the medium line. So we had equations relating Vs to Vr from which we got the ABCD parameters of the medium line. I am I'm having exactly the same equivalent circuit, except that these are all Z prime, Y prime, etc. So let me write the equation. So Vs is one plus Y prime Z prime by two Vr plus Z prime Ir. So this is exactly the equation of the medium line pi model. Only thing is there instead of y prime, z prime, you put y and z, which is the actual total admittance of the line and z is the total impedance of the line. We did that. 
So now I'm just replacing that y and z with y prime and z prime here. So what is my objective? What is my objective? I want to find out what should be this y prime and z prime so that this pi equivalent circuit gives me the same ABCD parameters as the long line. That's the idea. Clear? Fine. And similarly, IS is Y prime, 1 plus Y prime Z prime by 4 VR plus 1 plus Y prime Z prime by 2 IR. So these are exactly as I told you. So if, if you take for the medium line, you would have written VS is equal to 1 plus YZ by 2. Okay. This is what you would have done in the medium line. VR VR plus Z by R. So from this, we wrote for the pi model, A is 1 plus YZ by 2 and B is Z and so on. Similarly, IS. Right? But now I can't write A. Yeah, A is 1 plus y, Z, y prime Z prime by 2. But what is that Y prime? I have to derive that. That is the idea. Now, so we have these two equations between uh, relating Vs and Is to Vr and Ir from the pi model, which we have derived earlier. Now, we have these equations for the long line model. We have derived it using the rigorous method. Remember, right? So you consider a small uh, segment delta x, the impedance is, um, uh, you know, delta x into z. And then we calculated how V changes, so on, and we arrived at this. So now what do I want to do? Let me choose a different color to highlight. Yes. Now what I want to do is, see, these two equations, these two equations relate the sending end parameters to receiving parameters. Similarly, these two also do the same. Now, I want these two to be equal. Then I can say that what I'm getting here is the equivalent model of this. After all, if I have two black boxes, both the black boxes give me the same response. I'm not bothered what is inside. That's the idea, right? Fine. So now if I want these to be equal, let me call this as one and this as two, right? So I want one and two to represent the same relationship, clear? Of the same network, of the same network, which means that the coefficients of VR and IR in both must be the same. The coefficients of VR and IR in both must be the same. So let's see, let's see. So if I equate the first, co the coefficients of VR, so here it is one plus YZ, Y prime Z prime by two in equation one, and it is cosh gamma L in equation two. So the coefficients of VR must be the same. So I have this relationship, one plus Y prime Z prime by two is equal to cosh gamma L. Clear? It has to be satisfied. Next, Likewise, the coefficients of IR also has to match. The coefficients of IR also has to match. So what's the coefficient of IR here? It is Z prime in one, and it is Z C shin gamma L in two. So I have this equation. Z prime is equal to Z C shin gamma L. Clear? So, so the issue is I find out y dash and z dash. I find out y dash and z dash so that these two equations are satisfied. Which two equations? This. 1 plus y prime z prime by 2 is equal to cosh gamma L and z prime is equal to z c shin gamma L. If these two equations are satisfied, it means that my equivalent pi model will give me the same equations as that of a long line. That's the idea. So now these equations, same equations only, we'll try to put it 
such that I get a neat expression for Z prime. So first, let me consider this. So we are doing a bit of manipulation here, okay, jugglery. Hmm? So, yeah. So let me take this first equation. Z prime should be equal to Zc shin gamma L. Zc shin gamma L, right? Zc is your characteristic impedance. So let me represent the characteristic impedance. That is nothing but root of Z by Y. Here, then I have shin gamma L as it is. Now I am multiplying and dividing by root of YZ by L, both in the numerator and in the denominator. Why do I do that? I'm just telling you, you know, it's for some manipulation. We'll see what, what happens with this. So just see here, here I have a root Z here. So I can write this as root of Y into root of z into l clear so i have a root z here and i already have a root z here so root of z into root of z will be equal to z so that is the z here and i have a l here i bring the l here right now what am i left with this root of z i have multiplied here so i'm left with root y so this root y will cancel out with this root y. Got it? Now I have shin gamma L that is here. This L has been taken here. So now I have root of yz. Root of yz is nothing but gamma. Root of yz is gamma and L. So I have a neat expression. And what is, what is z? So let us get very clear about these uh, uh, parameters here. Z is the small lowercase z is the impedance per unit length. That is so many ohms per kilometer. And this L is the length of the line in kilometers. And gamma is the propagation constant. And shin is the hyperbolic sine function. And so what is z into L? That is capital Z. What is capital Z? Capital Z is the total impedance. Total impedance of the line. That is equal to the impedance per unit length into total length. So I got a neat expression for Z prime. Z prime is equal to Z shin gamma L by gamma L. Right? Next, let's see whether I can extract something for Y, Y prime. So I have the other equation, one plus Y prime Z prime by two is equal to cosh gamma L. So this is nothing but equating the coefficients of VR. So I have this, right? So I will substitute for Z prime. I will substitute for Z prime from here, right? So one plus Y prime by two and Z prime is ZC shin gamma L. This is nothing but Z prime. And I have cosh gamma L. So from this equation, so I'm just changing colors so that, you know, it's clear what we are doing, right? So what am I doing? What Y dash by two is here. So I have cosh gamma L and this one comes here, minus one divided by ZC shin gamma L. ZC shin gamma L. So by applying trigonometric uh, manipulations to this, I get Y prime by two is one by Zc tan. Tan is tan hyperbolic. Tan gamma L by two. Clear? Again, I have Zc here. So one by Zc is root of y by z. This is nothing but one by Zc. Okay. Then I have tan gamma L by two. Now I multiply and divide by root of ZY into L by two into root of ZY into L by two. Same, there is a reason for that. There is a, a reason for that. Now uh, you see here, I have here also a root Z, a root Y into L by two. Okay, so this two is here, this two is here, and this root y into this root y will give me y, 
root y into y is y. And this L, L is here, L is here. I have tan gamma L by two, same, this is here, right? And root of ZY is gamma. So this denominator is gamma L by two. So I've just rewritten, rewritten it so that I get a compact value. And what is Y L by two? What is Y admittance per unit length? Into the length will give me the total admittance Y. Pi by two, tan gamma L by two, gamma L by two. So now I got a nice expression for Y prime. Okay, let's see how we represent it. This is what it means. Okay, so this is the equivalent Pi uh, model for the long transmission line, which means that this model will give me the same AB. I can I can you calculate the ABCD parameters. Um, by using the pi model, right? So it will give me the, the value of the ABCD parameter so obtained will be same as I get from the rigorous method. And what is this Z prime? The Z prime is Z shin gamma L by gamma L. And this Y prime, Y prime by two is uh, Y by two, sorry, this is not equal to Y by two, this is into Y by two into tan gamma L by two by gamma L by two. So this is called as the nominal phi model for the long line. Clear? Yeah. Now immediately it should strike you why phi model, why can't I have a T model? Yes, we can definitely have a T model, why not? Okay, so we will follow the same logic. So here in the T model, if you recollect, it was Z by two, Z by two. Now I represent it as Z prime by two, Z prime by two and Y prime. Now you will find it much easier to follow because we have already done. So this is Vs is equal to one plus Y prime Z prime by two Vr plus Ir Z prime. So these two equations are from the medium line T model, what we wrote, same thing. So this was the A con A, A, B, C, D parameters. And this is my long line. And I want these two to be equivalent. That means they should have the same behavior. So therefore, the coefficients should match. Therefore, the coefficients should match. So now let me call this as equation one. That is the equation for IS and here S2. So let's match the coefficient of it's a nice color. Okay. The coefficient of VR. So here the coefficient of VR is Y prime. And here it is shin gamma L by ZC. So Y prime is equal to shin gamma L by ZC. First equation. Yeah. Next, we need to match the coefficients of IR. So here it is cosh gamma L, and here it is one plus y dash z dash by two. So I have the other equation: one plus y dash z dash by two is equal to cosh gamma L. These two have to be satisfied. So now, just like how. Uh, we did in the pi model. Let's see if we can get some neat expressions for y prime and z prime. So this is what it is. This is that I have just brought it over here again so that uh, you can refer to it. So you have, you have this. So now let me take the uh, first one. Z dash by two from the second equation here. Z dash by two is cosh gamma L minus one, minus one by shin gamma L into ZC. Okay. Or what we will do is 
uh, we will take this uh, from from here. Z, I have substituted for y dash. So if I substitute for y dash, what do I get? Shin gamma l z c, right? So here I have this is equal to this. So from here I have z dash by two is cos gamma l minus one divided by shin gamma l by z c. So I have shin gamma l now by z c. So z c will go in the numerator. Okay. Next. So I have z c and this works out to be tan gamma l by two. Tan gamma l by two and the same manipulation how, like how we did for the pi model like you multiply it by a uh, root of you know z y by uh, root of z by l by two and again divide by root of z by l by two the same thing if you do and z c is root of z by y you will get z dash by two is equal to z by two tan gamma l by two into gamma l by two divided by gamma l by two I get this. So what did you have in the previous case? Yeah, here you had z dash is equal to z shin gamma l by gamma l in your pi model. So here z dash by 2 is z by 2 tan gamma l by 2 gamma l by 2. Similarly, I have y dash is shin gamma l by z c and uh, so divided by z c is root of y by z I multiply and divide by root y z l and same exercise. So the root y into root y becomes y. I have the l. So this root z and this root z gets cancelled. And this is nothing but gamma. So I have gamma l, sorry, y l, shin gamma l by gamma l. And y l is nothing but y. Y is the total admittance. So now you see, I have the neat T model. Z prime by 2 is equal to Z by 2, tan gamma L by 2 by gamma L by 2. And Y prime is Y shin gamma L by gamma L. So I can substitute these values. And it will give me the same behavioral equations as the rigorous model uh, for uh, long lines. Yeah. Okay. So with this, we are done with modeling. A lot of models you have seen. Now uh, we will just take up some uh, quiz questions. Let us see if you can answer them. Name the cable or conductor which connects the distributor to the consumer terminals. So we saw in the first chapter, feeder. So feeders will not have tappings in between. Then you have the distributor. Then finally, this distributor will be, distributor will have tappings in between. Then you have a conductor which will connect the distributor to the consumer. What is that called? Hmm? It's called the service mains. It's called the service mains. Now, which of the following materials are not used for the transmission and distribution of electrical power? Copper, copper is used. Copper wires are extensively used. The only problem with copper is its cost. Aluminium, yes. We have aluminium conductors, they are cheaper, lighter, but aluminium conductivity is not very good as compared to copper. Steel, yes, we use steel reinforced aluminium conductors, we use tungsten. No, we don't use tungsten because tungsten is not a good conductor. So the answer is tungsten. Which of the following are the constants of the transmission line? Inductance, capacitance, resistance, conductance, all of the above. They should be constant. All of them are constants. See, inductance and resistance are 
the property of the conducting material itself. So it will be a constant for a given line. Capacitance is the capacitance between the line and the ground. That will also be a constant. Maybe it will vary slightly with respect to atmospheric conditions, but, but for a given line and in a given location, it will be a constant. Conductance is because of leakage. It will depend on the condition of the dielectric medium. So therefore, we can say all of the above are constants. Which of the following is the source of heat generation in cables? So now you have studied about the underground cables, right? So they have a conductor and they have a sheath and they have a leg armor around and so on. So what causes the heating of the cables? So I have told you that cables cannot be used for very long lines. We have easily seen lines, transmission lines of 600 kilometers, 700 kilometers and so on. Uh, you can't use such long cables. What is the reason? What is the heat source of heat in the cable? Dielectric losses in cable insulation, conductor losses, sheath losses are all of the above. Answer is all of the above. Why? See, the dielectric losses consists of losses due to leakage through cable insulation and uh, caused by dielectric polarization. So in field theory, you would have studied whenever you have an AC current, there is a dielectric polarization. So this will cause loss because any dielectric is a lossy medium. So this depends on what? It depends on the level of voltage, on the frequency, on the permittivity of the material used for insulation in the cable. And uh, this loss is more obvious and profound in HV and EHV cables. So dielectric losses are definitely caused for heating of cables. Next, conductor losses. So wherever there is a conductor carrying current, there will be loss. So I squared R loss will be there. So conductor losses will also be there. Now, when the cables carry AC current, they will produce a pulsating magnetic field. And this magnetic field will link with the lead sheath, the sheath used over the conductor. So obviously a varying magnetic field will create an electric field and hence current will be induced in the sheath. It's eddy current. You all studied about eddy current losses. So here also you have eddy currents. So eddy currents are currents, you know, uh, created on the surface of a conducting medium due to varying magnetic fields, alternating magnetic fields. So this sheath also produces losses. Therefore, in a cable, you have dielectric loss, you have conductor loss, and you have sheath loss, and all of them contribute to heating of the cable. Which of the reasons, for which of the reasons, the cables should not be operated too hot? Why should it do not let the cable temperature rise too much? The oil may lose its viscosity and it may start drawing off from higher levels. So when it becomes, you know, viscosity is lost, it will leak. Expansion of oil may cause the sheath to burst. Unequal expansion may create voids in the insulation, which will lead to ionization. All of the above. All of the above can happen when the cable gets heated. Therefore, it's imperative to see that we provide suitable compensation when we use cables so that this excessive heat does not damage the cables. The conductors of the overhead lines, what we use are stranded conductors, Solid conductors or both can be used, both solid and stranded or none of the above. They have some other configuration. What's the answer? 
Yes, you guessed right. It is stranded conductors. What is the reason? The stranded conductor offers a larger surface area because there are a number of strands. They offer a larger surface area for the flow of current. And this, so when you have a larger surface area, you can reduce the diameter of the conductor for the same current carrying capacity. And the other thing is the larger surface area will also give you lesser overall resistance compared to a solid conductor. Compared to a solid conductor, it will give you lesser overall resistance. And uh, with this, your losses also will be reduced. And since losses are reduced, efficiency of transmission will improve. And any current losses also will be much lesser than in solid conductors. So because of all these reasons, stranded conductors are popularly used in overhead lines. The power factor of industrial loads is generally unity, lagging, leading, any of the above. See, what kinds of loads cause unity power factor? They're only heating loads, resistive loads. So primarily they're heating loads. The two heating what? Heating with resistance, not using furnaces, not induction furnaces, arc furnaces. They don't give resistive load. So very, and incandescent bulbs used to, but we no longer use them today, right? And leading, you don't have a load which draws a leading current. Unless you intentionally put a capacitor for some reason, they don't, uh, you know, the loads don't draw leading currents. So the correct answer is lagging because most of the loads, industrial loads are electric motors, transformers, welding plants, discharge lights, air conditioners. So all these are lagging loads. What is the value of charging current in transmission, short transmission lines? It is less than medium lines, equal to medium lines, more than medium lines, and more than long transmission lines. So how do you answer this question? So the charging current is the current drawn by the capacitor of the line, right? So the current will depend on the capacitive reactance. And the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the capacitance because it is 1 by C omega. Now, what did we say? In the short line, in short lines, C is negligible, very small. Clear? Therefore, XC will be very large. And hence, it will draw less current. Therefore, the correct answer is the charging current in short transmission lines is less than the medium lines, which is less than that of long lines. So the logic is this. C is small. X is large, so I is small, current is small. The regulation of short transmission line depends on only on line resistance, only on line inductance, only on line capacitance, line inductance and line resistance. Obviously the answer is the last one because in a short line you model only the resistance and inductance. We don't model the capacitance. What is the percentage voltage regulation of a short transmission line if it's sending end and receiving end voltages are 160 kV and 132 kV respectively? So your answer is um, it will be 160 okay, minus 132 by 130. So this would be, let me just quickly calculate it, 160 minus 132 divided by 1, 132. So it is into 100, of course, if I want in percentage. So this is, this works out to 21.21%. So this is, I'm using the formula Vs minus Vr by Vr. Right? There's one more formula for regulation. You remember that we are not or we no load. We are no load minus we are full load by we are full load. Here we will use this. 
next a single phase so when you do these problems you see single phase transmission line is transmitting 1100 kilowatts so this is the receiving end power at 11 kV this is the receiving end voltage and UPF line resistance total line resistance is 5 ohms what is the efficiency of the transmission line so first I have to find IR it is single phase Power is 1100 k kilowatts and voltage is 11 k. So into 10 to the power of 3 or 10 to the power of 3 will get cancelled. Power factor is unity. So it is 100. The total resistance is 5 ohms. So I told you when they give you the total resistance for a single phase, it is normally understood that it's the entire loop resistance. So 100 square into 5 will give me 50 kilowatts loss and efficiency is output 1100 divided by output 1100 plus 50 that is 1150 which is 95.6 percent if you are observing in all the problems we do the transmission line efficiency is quite high it's all 95 and above pretty good Voltage regulation of a transmission line should be minimum, maximum, greater than 50%, less than 50%. So what is voltage regulation? The difference between sending end and receiving end voltage. So if the voltage regulation is large, it means you're dropping. There's a huge drop in the voltage in the line itself, which is not good, right? So therefore, whether it's a machine, whether it's a generator, whether it's a transformer, whether it's a transmission line or a cable, the regulation should always be less. So the regulation should be minimum. Which of the following transmission line can be considered as medium line? So we saw medium line is normally up to 200 kilometers. The justification is I told you if I uh, take around 50 hertz, so 200 into 50 is 10,000 and roughly L into F greater than 10,000, we go for long line model. So you can say up to 200 kilometers. What is the value of shunt capacitance of medium transmission line? Is it very high? Long lines have, and cables, cables have the highest shunt capacitance than long lines. So it is not this. Is it zero? Definitely not. It's not negligible. So the correct answer is medium. The shunt capacitance of the long, of, of the medium transmission line is medium. So with this uh, session, we have completed module three of the course on transmission and distribution. I hope you uh, liked it. So to summarize in this model, uh, we in, sorry, in this module, we saw the different line models, the short line, the medium nominal T, the medium nominal Pi and the long line, right? How they are classified how to solve and we saw about the generalized circuit constants and how to calculate efficiency regulation and sending and parameters etc and we also did problems on where there is a cap on the resistance and how much of or there's a cap on the regulation so or, or a cap on the efficiency and how you calculate different parameters when you're given some constraints and i have covered a lot of uh, multiple choice and short answers, everything which would be helpful for you people if you are uh, taking up any competitive exams. And so 